Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this day. This is, of course, our children's Christmas program. It's always a wonderful Sunday filled with lots of uh, unexpected things that happened and lots of energy. So it's great to see everybody here. <laughs> we're going to do things a little bit different because of the program, and we're actually going to start with our announcements. So I'm just going to dive right in. Um, first of all, our Paris nurses right after worship down in our fellowship hall, which is below us, are going to do blood pressure checks. So I invite you to head down there, and they will help you with that. Um, also in our parlor, which is out here during our fellowship time, as we're having coffee and juice and treats, there'll be the serve sale, and there's information in your bulletin about that. So I invite you to do that. That'll be for the next confirmation class, confirmants. Remember, we're going to meet tonight at 6, and uh, sanctuary choir. Those in Sanctuary Choir, we're going to be in the sanctuary um, here at 7 o'clock. And just so you have it on your calendar, the cantata this year will be on Sunday, December 18th that the choir is working on. With the Sanctuary Choir, because we need to basically set up in this area, we really need help um, of anybody who can stay after the service to help take the set down and just kind of get it put away neatly so that our Sanctuary Choir tonight actually has room because they're going to fill up this entire area up here tonight. So um, just come give some, lend a hand. Our Tai Chi will be uh, going on this week, Monday and Friday at 11. Our women's prayer breakfast, it's your turn this Wednesday. So all women are invited to come. And uh, we just have a simple breakfast in times of prayer, and we end with communion. So that'll be at 7 a.m. And our lunch bunch, of course, is meeting every Tuesday. We're doing a study on the parables of Jesus. So... You're invited to uh, be a part of that, as well as lunch. Um, next Sunday, there's a lot that I just wanted to call your attention to. So next Sunday, the Giving Tree, which is out here, and there's still tags left, and I invite you to take a tag and sign up on the clipboard next to it. Those presents are due back here, unwrapped under the tree. Um, the Youth Bake Sale to support their mission trip for the summer will be next Sunday as well. The Surf Holiday Craft Sale will be going on again in the parlor during fellowship time. And the Christmas poinsettias, so in your bulletin is this nice red insert. Looks like this. If you want to get poinsettias, I invite you to fill this out and put that in the offering plate um, this morning. And one last thing about Family Promise. It starts next Sunday, the 11th through the 18th. The board is out there, and so I invite you to um, take a look if there's uh, jobs that are there that you want to be a part of um, as well. Um, so yesterday we uh, decorated the church. You see how beautiful it looks. I just wanted to share a few pictures uh, from that day. This is Marilyn Theot. Marilyn helped uh, do breakfast yesterday, and there's the Baker family with their <laughs> beautiful kids. And uh, here's some people eating. We had a wonderful breakfast. And then, of course, it was on to decorating. And uh, there's Devin up on the ladder doing the tree. The tree this year... Um, should look new to you because it is brand new. The tree that's been here in the sanctuary for decades is gone, and this is a brand new tree that we have. So there's Devin getting that decorated. There we are decorating as you walk in. And then, of course, we had our rehearsal with our kids to get ready for the Christmas program, and so there's our rehearsal. There's our wonderful, cute little kids that you're going to get to see this morning, and, and there they are all up in front. Um, so thank you, a big thank you to everybody who came yesterday to help get the church ready and to be here to support the kids as they did their, their dress rehearsal um, as well. So is there any other announcements that I missed? Yes, Marilyn. <laughs> oh, so next week we are also beginning to collect winter clothing. So bring in your winter clothing uh, next week as well. Otherwise, I, I do invite you to read through the bulletin for other announcements and the inserts that are in here, stuff going on in the life and in the ministry um, of the church. So, with that, I invite us. Yeah, yeah. I've been terribly remiss about keeping you all up to date on all things the church while you're related. Um, there is one other concert that has to do with a white insert. Uh, it's free, and it's close by uh, the annual Horns of Coming Christmas. It's a gathering of as many horn players as
<laughs> All right, so the Horns of Plenty concert at USM. And if you didn't hear it, it's free. <laughs> and what Dane referred to is in your insert in the middle section here, we listed all the things coming up for our, within our church community, including Christmas Eve. But at the bottom, we included the various community offerings that involve people of our church, like what Dane's talking about. And some things are like the Bel Canto Chorus and the Boy Choir and the Lakeshore Symphonic Band that many of our members are a part of. And I invite you to be a part of those musical offerings to help us uh, get ready for the or be a part of the Christmas season. Anything else that I missed? Well, then I invite us to come. And uh, on this uh, wondrous day, as we come to hear the story uh, presented through us by uh, our wonderful children and, uh, and our youth, let us come, let the Spirit bind us together, and let us worship. Please join us for the call of worship. Oh yeah. You come seeking Jesus, the light of the world. We believe in the strength of God to illuminate dark places. Lord, in this hour of worship, kindle in us the light of your love. Let your light shine through us now and forever. Please join us for singing hymn 249. <laughs>
In this Advent season, we take time to light our second candle. And to help us this morning, I want to invite up Amber and Eric and their uh, beautiful children. And they're going to lead us through you. This will be in your bulletin, but also on the screen as we uh, light our second candle of peace. So welcome and thank you for helping us in lighting this day. Yeah, I'm going to get that. So if you just want to make sure handheld three is on. Good morning. As we gather around the Advent wreath today, we relight the candle of hope to remind us of God's endless hope in our world. On this day, we are conscious that we live in a world too often devoid of peace. The second candle of Advent reminds us of peace and of him who comes to the world as the Prince of Peace. The prophet Isaiah wrote, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. May the light of this candle Brighten our troubled hearts. May its light guide Earth's warring nations to peace. May its light eradicate the cancer of violence, the malignancy of prejudice, and the disease of discrimination. So let us turn to one another and make that peace real as we share and pass the peace of Christ with each other. You may be seated. So, Peter, if we can have the third handheld mic on, we're going to move into our prayer time as a community. 
And so I invite you to lift up any joys you have to thank and praise God for or any, woo, or any concerns that you might have. So I have my little mic so that we can hear one another. So, all right. Um, this Wednesday I have an orchestra concert. Okay. That's a great joy, Bernaya. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> well, that happens. <laughs> we, have a, is it on? No, we have a very good friend, um, Chris, who is a band director up at Lakeland University. There we go. There we go. Um, who was just put into hospice. So we pray for him. He's young and he's been struggling with cancer for over four years now, and he's at the end of his struggle. Okay. We pray for him in this time. So did you remember it? Okay. <laughs> um, next week at my school, in my classroom, I'm having a pajama party for reading so long. Okay. Joy for pajama party. <laughs> did you have one, Jordan? The, the, uh, my, tomorrow, I'm going to go to fight races and walk you through the fire. When my sister attacked, attacked, I'm not in it yet, and I'm not far yet. Okay. Maybe we'll what let she, mom interpret. <laughs> what she said was that Bernaya has a performance tomorrow um, at the Intermolar train station for Milwaukee's Children's Choir, and she's going, but she's not in the choir yet because she's not five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of heard intramural, didn't you? Hey, Connie. I have a concern this morning that I'd like to share with the church. I received an email last night from a friend of mine who has been mentoring a family, a Rohingya Muslim family, who has resettled in Milwaukee from Myanmar. For those of you who don't know, for the last decade, the Rohingya people in Myanmar have been persecuted. and. Uh, a lot of bad things have happened. I think we won't talk about those this morning, but really bad things have happened, and a few Rohingya families have been resettled here in Milwaukee. My friend is working with a family, two grandparents who are in their late 50s, two parents who have three little ones, two boys who are four and two and a half, and an infant girl five months old. I want to bring these folks to your attention today because they've been really working hard to assimilate to this culture. They come from a place where they didn't have electricity, plumbing, heating systems. They didn't have bus systems. They don't know anything about survival in a climate like ours. And my friend has been working with them to teach them the things they need to know. They've been working on English. The two, two males in the family are working at minimum wage jobs to support this family of seven. This past week, they took in a 15-year-old Rohingya boy who has been abandoned by the people who were helping him. His parents are dead. He has come to this country also looking for asylum. This boy arrived with the clothes on his back. That's it. He has no coat. He has no shirts, extra shirts, or socks, or anything. So um, we have managed, my friends and I have put together what we need to do to at least get him a coat. But if there are any families here who have clothes that would fit a boy who is five, feet six inches tall, apparently about as tall as me, um, and he is a small man's size. But if you have any clothes or things that could fit him, it would be very helpful to this little family who's struggling simply to survive. Okay. Thank you, Con. All right. Well, I'm going to get Wendy here. Yikes. I'm going to pass that down. 
for the snow gently falling outside our windows right now. And secondly, Devin and I just made eye contact and we can certainly help out a 15-year-old boy. <laughs> All right. And here we go. Charlie. We get a, we get a longer um, Christmas break than usual. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Longer Christmas break than usual. Uh, joy <laughs> for the holiday concert that's going to happen at uh, USM on Wednesday at 6.30. Okay. At the whole school. So for USM, the holiday concert at 6.30 this Wednesday. Other, uh, oop, all right. So I have a joy. I have a really good friend of mine who is about my age who lives in Delafield. And uh, his older sister has been going through the process of becoming a sister, a nun. And so yesterday she was... She officially became a sister, so. Okay, all right. And, oh, and Ann. You guys get to pass that down. The flowers on the altar this morning <clears throat> are in celebration of my grandson, uh, William Penner's first birthday, it was yesterday. And then my sister Kay Winston is here from New York, and she used to be a member here. So okay. some of you may know her. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to uh, Anne's sister, to Kay, and to the beautiful flowers, celebration of your grandson's birthday. Other uh, joys or concerns that you have on your heart? Um, our sister, Dave's sister, my sister-in-law, Cam, um, and some friends of ours in Libertyville are having a really rough week here. Um, they are teachers at Libertyville High School in Illinois, and four separate occasions, they lost four children over, four students over the Thanksgiving weekend, um, two to cancer, one to an accident, and I don't remember what the third one was, but they are struggling right now and could use some help and prayers. Okay, we pray for them. Other joys or concerns? Prayers of your heart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have mom to interpret. I <laughs> it almost my it almost my birthday. It's oh, we all heard that. It's almost your birthday. Every parent in the room was like, "Yep, yeah, birthday." <laughs> we got that one. That's a great joy. All right. <laughs> any other uh, any other prayers? Here, we'll turn that up. Any other prayers this morning? Joy or of concern? You know what? I'm just going to get rid of it. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> oh God, we uh, give thanks on this morning um, for this time to come and to gather to hear this story of Jesus' birth again, but to hear it through the innocence and through the songs and through the witness of your most precious gift you give to us through our children and through our youth. We are so very blessed and so very thankful for their presence and for the message that they bring to us and for this story that is as timeless, um, that tells us of these timeless truths of love and of hope, of grace, of joy, and of peace that is born again. Let us hear this story again with new hearts and new eyes um, as we this morning in prayer open our hearts to that presence that was born in Bethlehem but is with us mightily and powerfully this morning as we Think of those who are struggling this day, um, those who are struggling through loss and through grief, those struggling through illness and through injury, those struggling in poverty and in homelessness, in places of war and injustice, for those that are just struggling on the path and the journey of life. Oh Lord, this baby born in Bethlehem that we celebrate this story this day came to speak a word of good news and a word of hope to all those on their journey. Oh, Lord, we gather this morning with these prayers, but help us this day to have open eyes and hearts to see what tremendous joys we have around us, how what a wondrous, blessed people we are, blessed with our, our children and the gift that they are to us, the gift of families and of friends, our church family that prays for us and walks with us, and your son, Jesus Christ, who knows our, our hurts and our griefs and our pains and walks with us each and every day. Oh, Lord, we lift to you these prayers, but there are others on our hearts, and so we pause just for a moment to let your spirit move through and touch us in this time of silent prayer.
O oh God, as you've heard our prayers, both silent and spoken, hear us as we join with one voice as we pray together this morning. Our Father. And now our scripture. The scripture is in Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus made a law. It required that a list be made of everyone in the whole Roman world. It was the first time a list was made of the people while Cornelius Cornelius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be listed. So Joseph went also. He went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. That is where Bethlehem, the town of David, was. Joseph went there because he belonged to the family line of David. He went there with Mary to be listed. Mary was engaged to him. She was expecting a baby. While Joseph and Mary were there, the time came for the child to be born. She gave birth to her first baby. It was a boy. She wrapped him in large strips of cloth. Then she placed him in a manger. There was no more there was no room for them in the inn. Let's stand as we respond and sing once in Royal David City, hymn two (laughs) fifty.
shelter and for rest. Comfy beds and tasty meals are here for every guest. the government made us come all this way. After all, we are part of a royal family. We should be treated better than this. Maybe someday we won't have to leave home to pay our taxes. Well, that will never happen. Excuse me, sir. I'm allergic to goose feathers. I must have a different pillow. Speaking of pillows, where is the pomegranate that's supposed to be on every pillow? I didn't get one. This inn sure is crowded. Tell me about it. We don't have room for one more guest. Wow, that's a lot of people. So many people had to travel from Bethlehem to pay their tax because they are part of King David's family. Wow, that's a big family. <laughs> Even an inn like mine is full tonight. And you only have a one-star rating. Well, right down. The other guests might hear you. Speaking of one-star ratings, did you notice that one huge star in the sky? There it is, right above us. Wow, that's one big star.
Excuse me, sir. We are looking for a place to stay. Wow, two more guests. Where are we going to put them? Don't ask me. You'll have to go somewhere else. There simply is no more room in this inn for someone of your type. There's really not enough room for all of us. I was kind of getting a penthouse suite. <laughs> there's barely enough food for all of us at dinner. I'm truly sorry, but they're right. There is no more room in the end. We've come so far, and as you can see, my wife is in no condition to be traveling. Well, I do have a stable out back. You would have to share with my sheep and cattle, but you are welcome to use it. It's all I have to offer. Thank you, kind sir. That'll be fine. Wow, they're going to sleep in this stable? Ha, you certainly would not catch me sleeping in a stable. A person of my station in life has to pay attention to appearances. After all, I am the owner of the largest wool company in Judea. Wow, ooh, ah, it's impressive. No, sir, we, F.W. Woolworth does not sleep in a barn. Absolutely. Ha, perhaps you people have not recognized me, or maybe just in awe of my fame. You must know that I'm rock starting winner of Israel's Got Talent. Wow. Ooh. Ah. Impressive. When I was still working at the rock quarry, I might have been so seen in a barn, but now I'm one of the beautiful people. Yes, she's got a point. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's face it, folks, there are haves and have not. We are has. I wrote RIRS, you know, the Roman International Revenue Service, and there's no way I'm going to get shabby treatment.
I certainly hope they don't expect to stay here. Uh, please excuse us, we were looking for a baby in your manger. Wow, they think there's a baby in our manger. Well, this angel told us this good news of great joy, that a baby was born today in a manger. Wow, now she's saying that an angel told him this? There was an angel. She said he was the savior of the world, the Messiah. Wow, now that is the ultimate wow. <laughs> At first, it was just one angel, but then there was a chorus of angels, all singing, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, goodwill to good people. Wowzers, that, so, that is some good news. There was a baby in your manger. You can always trust the angels to tell the truth. An angel told me that there would be a, a baby in the manger and we would name him Jesus. The same angel told me that this baby would be great. He will be a son of God. A long time ago, prophet said, one day uh, God would send someone from King David's family to save everyone. Now I remember, King David said 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the one he was talking about. And the prophet Isaiah said that when the Savior came, our sins would be as clean as the cleanest wool. In fact, he even called the Savior the Lamb. King David also said that that the Savior also said that every we hope for all people who are in need. I guess you could say that's all of us, even me. And now Jesus has come for all people, the, um, the humble and the proud, the weak and the strong, the rich and the poor, the sad and the happy. And now Jesus is here. No one is out and everyone is in. Do I have time for one more wow, the awesomest wow of all? Because of Jesus, we are all forever part of the in crowd. That's, some, that's the best news ever. Wow. Amen and the end. for the congregation's support for struggling families through the sponsorship of an animal through Heifer International. This year, in honor of our little preschool sheep, we are collecting money to sponsor a sheep for a family. Most sheep produce about 15 to 30 pounds of wool per year. The average ewe, Is that ewe? ewe produced <laughs> about 1.5 gallons of milk allowed a sturdy steam of substance income, sustainable income. Sheep often give birth to twins or triplets, which allows the heifer family to pass on the gift to several families each year. There are more than 1,200 distinct breeds of sheep around the world, each suited to provide different types of wool and other resources. Sheep have been a key part of farming throughout the history of the entire world, and 
figure and figure from from and figure prominently in major religions, customs, and images, including the image used as a follow as a follower of Jesus in this year's program. Each Sheep Week sponsor costs $120, and we are hoping to provide, provide at least one. Thank you for your donations to help out families around the world this Christmas with a gift that keeps on giving. And you can give your donation in a little envelope like this. forward, <laughs> collect our morning offering. wondrous gifts and blessings that we receive from you. We do offer them back this morning in praise and thanksgiving. And of course, we are most joyful for the greatest gift you've given us, that of your Son, Jesus Christ, for the gift of joy and of hope, of grace and peace, born again and born anew. We offer you thanks and our praise as we give these offerings back to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's join in our closing hymn. Hymn 237, Sing We Now of Christmas.
person. I really don't need the mic. <laughs> anyway, I just want to um, acknowledge all of your presence here today to celebrate the Christmas pageant that they worked so hard to put on. Didn't they do a wonderful job? And this was my first time seeing it too, so this is really exciting for me. So we have a bunch of thank yous today um, to give out. We have Connor, and we have Madeline, and we have Broden. You're welcome. And we have Ellie. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetheart. We have Torsten. Is he, did he come back in yet? Okay. <laughs> we have for Devin. Wonderful, Joseph. Wonderful. And Alyssa. Great Mary. With Mary. <laughs> she had it. She had it. Brenaya. Where are you, Brenaya? Oh, how sweet. And to lead everyone in the call to worship, too. What a wonderful job. Maddie and Kate. And, oh, you guys could sit down, too, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I'm doing what Tim did to us earlier. Huh? <laughs> okay. And Jimmy and Jordan. And so you're welcome, sweet darling. Samantha and Haley. And Simon, cutest little jo uh, sheep that sat in front of me this morning. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry, pumpkin. He means it in his heart, Mom. He means thank you in his heart. Morgan and Mary, the real Mary of the congregation, Sydney and Charlie. Oh my word, you did a wonderful job this morning. And then we have some important people. Don't look, I'm bossy even up front. We have Elna. Thank you, Elna. And Jeff, thank you, Jeff. And Marilyn, thank you. And Nan, she said she might not make it today. Um, Ellen, oh no, never mind. Kristen <laughs> and Dave. Oh, here. Okay. Kristen and Dave. And <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, you know, we have cooks and we have production people and we have people who make sure all the stuff is done and that everybody's ready and then we have people like Peg and Ellen <laughs> <laughs> who we never want to forget because of the love and devotion that you guys show all the time to all of us. So thank you very much and we love you. All right, thank you to everybody who uh, worked hard on this. I want to invite up our, uh, our youth who are going to lead us all in our benediction this morning. And let's stand as we sing this, or as we say this, and then sing to life and ministries. As we go forth and... So join us. Oh, I'm sorry. As we go forth into the world this morning... May we carry the message of the children today with us. Our lives can be overcrowded with busyness and our great deal of concerns, just like Bethlehem can be overwhelmed. May we find room in our hearts and in our lives for Jesus this Christmas season and in every day of the year. Amen. So let us sing, Go in the Peace of God. Amen. 